Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week it's time to answer some of your questions. So I've got two questions here that are somewhat related. Let's dig in. Okay. Hey Todd, can I plug my motorhome into shore power without installing house batteries in the motorhome first? Well, that's kind of a catch-22. Here's the thing. Okay, your batteries and your converter work together to handle big loads. Okay. If they put a converter in big enough to actually handle the heavy loads and with the motor coach, that's going to be your landing gear. And I know you're going to say, well, Todd, my, my um, uh, alternator is running at this point and my slides go out. Alternator needs to be on, which means the engine is on. Can I run things with just my converter? I'm going to say with a limited answer, yes. Here's the thing. Okay. That converter that they put in, depending on the size of the converter and the size of your Class A, is either probably a 55 amp, 75 amp, hopefully a 100 amp converter uh, battery charger. The question is, can it, if you're plugged into shore power, can you run that without your batteries? Yes. But there's going to be certain instances where you need the help of the battery as well, right? You're also making that converter do 100% of the work. It's fine for a while, and if it's just to run your lights, uh, maybe the, the uh, fart fan or whatever, totally fine. You don't need the house batteries. You can take those out. So if it's in storage or something like that, you'd like to have a little bit of you know, power in there. But the question is, is you know, for me, is why isn't the batteries in there in the first place? Um, so I guess that's my question, because are you running the RV now without your coach batteries? There may be a reason. I'm not, I'm not judging or anything else that maybe you have to switch them out and it may take some time before you get your new ones. You know, the question is, is that in between time, can you run your motor coach, the 12 volt system, just by plugging into shore power with the converter? Yes, you can. But the more you use that, the quicker you're going to wear that item down which is going to be the converter. So yes, limited, but it depends. If you're going to try and bring in the slides or something like that, follow the recommendations of your um, uh, from the OEM. Should you go ahead and start and have the help of the alternator? Alternator and the converter can handle the big loads. So good question. Um, I hope that answers. If that doesn't, go ahead and just write some more. The next question. Uh, great channel. There you go. Love all the great information. Yeah, you do. All right. I have a question about, um, I have a question that nobody knows the answer to. Um, so I'm asking you because we all know Todd, you know, all the answers. He didn't put that in, but that's the implied, you know, uh, from that statement. That's what's implied. No one else knows this, but Todd, I know that you do. So I'm going to ask you. Here it is. All right. We have an Alliance uh, 340 RL uh, that we are packing up in May or June. We have a garage that has a 50 amp plug, and I want to know if we can leave it plugged into uh, plugged into that 50 amp plug when we're into storage. Uh, we have a 12 volt refrigerator, and we would like to keep it running while in storage, but I don't know if it would damage the lithium batteries. Um, or the other part of the solar system with constant power going through them and very little pull on the system. I'd much appreciate your expert advice. Well, here's the thing. The reason why no one knows is because there's several different 50 amp applications. What do I mean by that? You can have a 50 amp plug inside your uh, house and it may be three prong, right? And so you have two prongs that are kind of set at a 45 and then you have one ground. Do not plug into that. That is 50 amp, or what we'll say, that's 240. That's probably the better term. Laminate on the amperage based on the plug, okay? So that's a hot leg one, a hot leg two, and a ground. What you don't have is a neutral. Now, if it's a four prong 50 amp plug, right? So you got a left side. Yeah, to you, that's your left side. That's my right side. Left side and right side down here. You have another prong right down here, okay? We need to verify if this is the neutral. What am I getting at? Of course, then you have your ground. 
if it's a four prong and one of those prongs is a neutral, right? You got 50 amps on leg one, 50 amps on leg two. We just need to make sure that it's hooked up correctly. Yes, you can plug into it because even though we're split phase, there's nothing in that alliance that runs on 240. You have two legs of 120 volts. And if we're running 120 volts, you need to have a return path home, which is the neutral. So we need to make sure there's a neutral. No, we cannot share the neutral and ground, which is what, you know, a lot of the three prong applications are. Neutral and ground are the same. Do not plug into that. Okay. You need to have a neutral. So you would need to get a multimeter. Okay. You need to put it on volts AC. You need to put one probe, doesn't matter, red or black, over on the hot side. Say the, in this case, again, your right, my left, one there, and if you have that middle prong down at the bottom, you plug into that one, just like you would on a 50 amp receptacle. If you have 120 volts, great. Now test over here, one on the, I'm gonna say right side, but it's your left side, and down, and you'll see 120 volts, okay, great. Now what I want you to do is go between left side and right side. And if you can go between left side and right side, and you see 240, 208, uh, 240, somewhere between 208 and 245, then you're good to plug into it. If you don't have a multimeter, I wouldn't plug into it. Do you have an EMS? If you have an EMS, right, like a multimeter, you can plug into that, the energy management system, and it'll begin to read everything for you. And if it's good and it uh, closes the relay, then yes, you can absolutely plug into it. Those are great electrical questions. If you have any more electrical questions, go ahead and reach out. And there's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just wanna learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. That's one. Bam.